Hey everybody. Um, so you probably recognize this from a famous musician. Um, I grew up in a little town called Ocean Township, New Jersey, which is right next to Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, it was a really awesome place to live. Literally ride my bike to the beach, um, fishing, surfing, boating, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, then I wonder, what the heck am I doing in the desert sometimes? And I live in such a great place. But we did have winter there, so it wasn't, you know. So you can go to the next one. So this is the actual beach where I grew up in the background. And it looks really beautiful, right? New Jersey gets a bad rap that it's such a bad state. I mean, that's about as, I'll put that beach up against anybody's beach. Big thing for me in life is family and friends. The reason I have this picture up here is that's my wife, Lisa. That's my daughter, Carly. And these kids there are two of my best friends that have been my friends since I was a little kid. Um, the two twins are my friend Bobby's kids, and Brandon is my friend Matt's kid. And Matt and I have been friends since we were born. He's two weeks older than me. We were actually in the crib together where our moms were hanging out just back in the day. Just throw the kids in the crib, you know, you don't care back then. Um, all right, so you can go to the next one. Um, one more picture from this last trip that we took. This is my cousin Glenn. He's about 15 years older than me. Um, he's always kind of like a father figure and a very good friend to me. Um, and that's my parents who, the reason we're in New Jersey this summer was my nephew's wedding, who I was all excited to tell um, that he's a police officer, but our police officer is not here today. So um, anyway, they're 81 years old and they're still going super strong. Um, so I'm really proud of that. Um, you go to the next one again. Um, out here, I need my water fix. So I love to go to Bartlett Lake. Um, there's my daughter wakeboarding right there, and then there she is in with her uncle and aunt who were out here visiting recently. Um, we took them out on the boat and had a blast. Um, so if anybody's ever interested in going up to Bar Lake on the boat, feel free to ask me. Go to the next one. Um, and I'm super proud of my daughter, Carly. Um, right now, um, this picture is after induction ceremony at the National Honor Society. She's in the choir at Horizon High School. She's getting almost all E's. Math has been a little difficult for her, but it's only a B, so it's not too bad. Um, she works six days a week at our temple watching the kids in the after school program and then on Sunday mornings. So she's bringing home some money so she can pay for her own gas for the car that we had to give her. So it's all good. Um, next one, please. And then one last thing is that's the three of us, Lisa, Carly, and myself at my nephew's wedding. And this is in Hoboken, New Jersey, where if you look closely, you can see the Empire State, State Building right across the river. If you've never been to anywhere in North Jersey on the Hudson River or New York City, you have to go before your lifetime's done. Um, next one. And then last one my wife wanted me to put in there is this was Carly at her Phantom, doing the Phantom of the Opera at the choir this year. And then my daughter taking a little selfie. There's my in-laws in the back there who you probably haven't seen yet. Um, and you go to the next one. Okay, that's my life in a nutshell. Not that exciting. Alarms are super exciting though, right? <laughs> so, I've been in the... Last week, Dr. Michelle said she knew what she wanted to do right when she was a little kid. I wasn't one of those people, right? But I was surrounded by the alarm business my whole life because my dad started his own alarm company in the 70s. Then he went on to start a monitoring company, which is I was monitoring alarms when I was 14 years old. I kind of grew up in that business, and we have a joke in my industry. It's kind of like once you get in, you can't get out. I don't know if any of you guys, you guys had that. So I've been in the business a long time. I've been with Central Security for eight years now. Um, Central's been around for 40 years, which in uh, alarm terms is quite a long time. Um, we own and operate our own UL listed monitoring center. Um, it's only dedicated to our own customers, so we don't subcontract out to other companies or subcontract out to a third-party monitoring, which is always an important question to ask people uh, when you guys are shopping around for an alarm. So I just want to show you guys something real quickly. This is actually uh, the alarm panel that we love to use. Um, it's kind of more like a smartphone than it might be an alarm system. Um, kind of if you have one of those old keypads with the touchscreen things on there with the little buttons You kind of have an old flip phone if you have a system similar to this Which I know a lot of you guys and Shannon's being nice to show the app for her system that she has Thank you Shannon, and I'm gonna miss you. That was a bombshell you dropped, but um, anyway um, 
So this system is super easy to use. When you want to arm it, you just press arm and then you press stay away and you walk out your door. It's that easy. When you come home, the keypad's right up there. You can just put your code in and you're all done. Um, that's just the beginning of it. Another big feature that I love about this system, it's got what's called two-way voice. So the operator will actually come right on the speaker and talk to you guys if your alarm's activated. Why is that good? Well, let's say you have a bunch of teenagers. First of all, anybody in here who has an alarm system, set it during the day when you leave, because that's the most important time. That's when all the break-ins happen in this town. So let's say your teenager comes, comes home, sets the alarm off. Instead of us calling you and you're at work and you're not really sure what's going on, we can just get the password right from your teenager. My daughter's done it several times. They walk in, they hear it beeping, it doesn't mean anything to them. They just keep walking, <laughs> and then all of a sudden the, the, the siren goes off, right? So um, this also has what's called a Z-Wave module inside. What that does is enables all of the home automation that this system can do. So I always tell everybody it's the last alarm you're ever going to need. You can control your door locks, your thermostats, your lighting, anything that you want to do. Um, it also is compatible with cameras, so you can hook those up as well. The base package for this, which all of you guys have a little brochure on your, your desk. Hopefully you guys will bring it with you so I don't feel really bad and have to pick them all up at the end. Um, you, guys can, you guys can hold on to those. You can take a picture of it, keep it in your phone. If anybody ever asks you about an alarm system, you say, I got the guy for you. And like Wesley said, you can actually say that you know me a little bit, because you know I'm from Asbury Park, New Jersey, right? That, that's enough to tell somebody. Um, so what you can see on there is all the different devices that we have. One thing that's really popular, if you see on there, it's called an image sensor motion. It's this little motion detector, and you can do still pictures in there. It is right here. So what's good about that is it doesn't need Wi-Fi. It, uses, it goes through our cellular. This is the only product that actually offers this. It's great for snowbirds. Uh, if you have any um, snowbirds in your life, this thing's great for two reasons. It has the two-way voice on there. That way when they're coming and going, they're going to have their kids using the house and they're going to have people come to the house. We can stop false alarms with that. But they also like to take pictures in their house when they're gone. They don't also want to have internet all year long, and Kathy might know a little bit about that. Um, they just, they might not ever get internet put on in their house because they're only there four months a year. So this enables them to still be able to take a picture inside their house anytime that they want to see what's going on in there. Um, another thing that this system does is controls your thermostats or your door locks. What's nice about the thermostat thing is also for snowbirds. Um, they need to know what's going on with their air conditioning when they're gone. If you live here all the time, it's really not that big a deal. So what I always tell everybody is our system can do as little or as much as anyone needs it to do. So I have this little thing that I do, which I think I left up on the other table. When I'm meeting with people, I have this little customer experience roadmap that I like to go through. So I can really ask people exactly what's important to them as far as our safety goes. Um, some people are more interested in certain things. Some people aren't interested in the burglar alarm aspect of an alarm system. They want to be able to do all the cool stuff and be able to do all their uh, online um, home automation stuff. Another thing that the system can do is it has what's called a little water bug. That can go, Joni was talking about the hot water. Uh, thing, the hot water machine, whatever the hell they're called. <laughs> you, can put, you can put a sensor right there if, it, if, the, if the hot water heater starts leaking, because she says to check it. Mine's in a closet in the garage. I don't really go in that closet very often. So this could, will let you know that there's water immediately, so you can catch it before it gets out of control. Um, I also have my little cheat sheet in here. Oh, there's one funny thing I wanted to tell you guys before I go, because I have 18 seconds left. Um, when I was talking about all the stuff that I've done, if you, I went to ASU between 87 and 91. I was a bartender at Bandersnatch Brew Pub, which a lot of people might remember, right across from Sun Devil Stadium. So if you came in during any of the ASU or Cardinals games back then, I probably served you a drink or two. 
and sold you one of those little smuggler bottles you could take into the stadium as well. Um, so thank you very much, and I appreciate you all listening.